people are always like, you're very beautiful. In, and, and they mean that in very different ways. And, and, and I've not been totally accepting of that for some reason. And you know, that's one of those things, I guess, as a person that I'm trying to understand, you know, why? Why am I this person that people feel like they need to say these things to? When inside I'm still trying to learn that about myself. It's an unanswered and open question for me. I'm from uh, London and I have uh, four blonde sisters and uh, a blonde brother. You know, we, we have a different dad. Growing up in a very kind of like white working class environment, and being brown with an afro kind of already put me on the outside. So I, I was uh, able to do my own thing and not have any pressure to fit in. And I think that really shaped me to be comfortable with being different. And when I was at art school, I wasn't happy that I could kind of get that out creatively. I finished school, I, I moved to Japan and I fell into this path um, of of uh, live visuals. When you're in a club in Japan, you're doing live visuals to a DJ. You realize that you're not thinking about anything, you're just feeling, because if you think, there's a delay. When I got here, I was like, oh, crap, what did I just do? I realized what I did in Japan, I couldn't transition here. It was really difficult. I made friends that believed in what I do, and they let me sleep on their couch. And I'm a great guest. If I sleep on your couch, I'll leave some artwork, and, and I'm super neat as well. The first year and a half here, I was completely lost. A few things have come out of that. You know, one is that I found that I could draw more, like on tangible things, you know, like walls and cars and people, shoes and shirts. When I realized I didn't need to wait for people, I could just do it myself, that's when things really started to change. And you know what, I'm a street kid, I've got common sense and, you know, I know what to say yes and no to. And, and for the fluff, I just blow it away. I have a jeans and shorts and a t-shirt and, and it hasn't changed. And I, I've always just worn that I've been comfortable with. And I think naturally over the years that has become my style. I work a lot with a, a couple of t-shirt brands, um, you know, design my own t-shirt. My work shorts, but I really like them. And people ask me where they can buy them. And I'm like, well, you can work for a year in you know, these shorts and, you know, then you'll get them. You feel very free in them and you can move and you create things. So this is you, me, with a backward E, so it basically reflects the me to say it's we. So it's like you, me, we. I'm dyslexic as well and you know, when, when you're younger that's like, ooh, a bad thing. But um, I like to remind myself that it's actually a good thing. This character called Toast Man and this is his eye and these are his legs. I normally have some questions on my shoes, like do you read? So when I sit on the train like this, you know, sometimes people are like, oh. What happens if you have to dress up? So this is my attempt at that. Um, so, just a white shirt, and I drew on it quite spontaneously. I kind of like the feeling of that white, unknown space that you can then add to. Colour's easy, you know, it's like a one hit. You see it and you get it. But with black and white, there's so much more room for discoveries. Drawing either on tangible things like a wall or drawing with projections, it's all about movement. The way that I will typically you know, approach a room or a wall is that I'll put the pen on the wall and I'll do a long line and shapes for as long as I can, for as long as it feels good. And then I'll take the pen off and then I'll look and I'll see negative shapes within those shapes or the lines that I've just drawn. And then I have almost like a language to fill in those shapes. It makes more sense to me in reflection. If you have good intention behind what you're drawing, it kind of what you're thinking about or what you're going through right then comes out. I like to think of everything as one big mistake because it's not intentional. It has good intention behind it, but I don't know what the outcome is. So I see everything as a mistake and I just enjoy it. So therefore it's not intimidating or there's no pressure about making a mistake anymore. But I'm most at peace when I'm drawing and then I get that feeling that says, stop. And that I listen to it and I stop. The art should be inclusive. Two-way connection between you and the viewer. Well, I just did a show and uh, 
there was a plumber working on the building. He came up to me at the end and he said, I'm your biggest fan and I'm gonna bring my wife in if that's okay. When the plumber walks off the street and says he loves it, then you know you're doing something right.